Hey guys, so today I have an Inspiron 11 3000 series. Someone gave me to look at because their keyboard stopped working. Essentially this part here would work, but these keys here would not work. So I was able to fix that by simply unplugging the keyboard and plugging it back in. So I'm going to show you where I did, how I did that, what I had to unplug for the keyboard. And I'm also going to upgrade the hard drive because it has a regular spinning hard drive in there. And uh, I'm also going to add some memory. Now this one, it says that it supports four gigabytes, but I read online that a lot of people say you can put an eight gigabytes uh, chip in there and it will work. Uh, so those are the three things I'm going to do. So I'll show you where the connector is, then I'll install this, install, install this hard drive, and then I'm also going to put this memory in. Now the hard drive I already copied, I already cloned uh, all the data that was here onto here. The nice thing is about, about Crucial is they do have a link to software that you can install. Then you can use something like this, this uh, uh, cable that I plugged into the USB. I plugged it in here. I was able to transfer all the data already from here to there. So then this one, when I put it in, it should be simple to basically turn it on and it should just work. So to open it, I'll show you how to do that. So we'll grab these small screw drivers here. There's essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws, and then there's one under this. And once you do those screws, it essentially lets you open it up really easily. So we'll do two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, and I'll grab a smaller screwdriver here that has a flat head, and I'll try to pop this. This is just stuck on there, it has a little bit of adhesive on the other side. I'm not sure why they put this one on there, but I'll just put it, let's put it over there, and then we'll use this one. All the screws are the same. All right, so now we'll flip it around. Let's see how many fell. Put these aside here. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. And there's a ninth one here. Alright, so once all those are off, then you essentially need to separate the two plastics here. I've been able to do it with my nail. Uh, if not, there's those little tools you can get that help you pop it off. But it's pretty simple. Get stuck on this side. Go down with my nail. So just like that, this piece comes off. So I'll put this aside here. So here you can see the drive. Let's see if I can move the camera a little bit closer. All right, so here it is. <clears throat> All right, so here you can see where the hard drive is. And here's the memory. And the keyboard is actually this connector here. All right, let me get even a little bit closer. There we go. Go down here. All right, so this, it's really simple. You can just use something like a little screwdriver and you tilt this in this direction and then this completely slides out. And then once you slide it out, I just slid it back in and then I just push this back down. And that was it. Once I did that, then the keyboard started working. Um, this computer, it was dropped, and that's what caused the keyboard to stop working. So I'm assuming that this shifted or something. I'm not really sure. There's no cracks or dents or anything on the plastic casing, but it must have hit somewhere here where this tilted a bit, shifted off place, and that's what was causing the problem. But it was a super simple fix uh, to get that to work.
So now let's take out the hard drive. There's one. What I see here is there's one screw over here, one here, one here, three, and uh, that's essentially it to get this, this guy out. So these are a little bit smaller screws than the other ones for the casing. So they're easy to identify, but I'll keep them separate over here. And then I'll put this one here. And now let's see, there was one on this side, I think we said, right here. Oops. Magnetic screwdrivers are a little bit better for that, but it's fine. So let's slide this out now. I can just, once they're all off, it just slides this way. So really simple to get this out. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll take these two screws off. That way we can swap it. Should just come out. Okay, so this one's out. I'm gonna slide this one in. Same exact spot. bit lighter than the hard drive so it's kind of nice and no moving parts and it's probably a little bit more efficient energy wise and it's way faster I've used crucial and I've used Samsung I also use Kingston but that one does not come with the software so then you got to go find a software you can use that's not hard but it's just Something you have to do with those. All right, so we'll put this back in here like this. Remember, it goes under this ribbon here. So I'm going to slide that in first, put it there. All right, now slide the whole thing back. That's it. Super simple. And then we'll put this screw here back in. And one here. And the last one will be down over here. Hopefully it won't fall. There you go. Move the ribbon a little bit out of, out of there so you don't get it underneath. There you go. And there's another screw here, but that's part of the casing on the outside, so that's gonna go afterwards. All right, so there's the hard drive, it's in place. And now what we'll do is uh, we'll put the memory in. Again, if you look at the specs for this computer, it's a 3000 series Inspiron 11, and it, uh, it says it supports up to four gigs, but people online say that you can basically put the eight gig and it does recognize it. So that's why I'm putting this in doesn't work I'll leave a comment I'll put a comment saying that it didn't work but it's out here okay there we go there we go it's on this side here and then memory is also very simple to put in I have other videos that show that but it's really sticky huh Careful not to break it. So, all right, there it is. So this, all you have to do is you pull these two tabs here on the side. When you do, it automatically pops out. So then I can slide it out. You'll see that this is on one side, the slot. So same. So for this new one, same thing. Grab it the same way. Put it back in there. And there it is. 
and then you just snap it back in. So I just push down and it just snaps. All right, so I pulled out this, uh, this was a Kingston that it had in there. I put this ATEC one. I've had really good results with ATEC. I've used Patriot also and Kingston and Samsung. In this case, I got an ATEC. Both those pieces, these pieces were pretty uh, economical. I think it was about $45 for them together. Uh, this is like a 120 gig drive. All right, so that's in. This keyboard's back in place. Everything's in. So now we'll just pop this back in here. Also, it just snaps it in place. So you can put it on and just start on one side. You can hear it click in everywhere. And then we'll put all the screws back in here. And that should be it. it should be an easy swap. And this will improve the speed of it. It's a fairly slow computer. It's a Pentium base, I believe. It's running Windows 10. So going from four gigs to eight gigs should help it. Uh, but the hard drive is really what's gonna really make it much better uh, with the faster SSD versus this Toshiba drive, which is bigger hard drive, but it's, it's very, it's definitely slower. This computer is about a couple years old. You can see on the hard drive it has a date of February 2017. So it's a very low end computer. I think it's when you get it on Black Friday, these are about a hundred bucks or maybe a little bit more. But it's a good travel one if you don't have to do a lot of work. You're just getting online, you need something small. So that's the main purpose of this computer. All right, and then the last thing is we'll put this little sticker, which, I mean, you don't have to. It doesn't have much of a purpose, I guess, but just put that back in here. Slide it in, push it in, and there you go. So now here's a big computer. Keyboard is still there. And should boot up. Might have to plug it in, it might be dead. Oh, a little snap there and then into place. Okay, I plugged in the computer, and then once I plugged it in, I hit the power, now it does boot. <clears throat> And it's basically telling me that the memory has changed. So I see that it seems to be correct now, and um, which makes sense, and I can continue. And now I can boot into the machine. Okay, so thanks a lot for watching. Hope this was helpful to someone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.